that leads to a government shutdown. That was simply not the dynamic here. They could agree. They can agree. The idea that, you know, Democrats and Republicans are miles apart on how to physically secure our southern border is quite simply nonsense. The president is on an island by himself here. Wow. And, J and Jake, uh, the maddening thing for Republicans uh, is there was no logic to any of this. They had to deal with Democrats. They were going to keep the government open. And then Ann Coulter and Rush Limbaugh told, uh, you know, Donald Trump, uh, gave Donald Trump about as bad of political advice as, as anybody has been given in a long time. If you just look at how badly Donald Trump's poll numbers have suffered because of it. So, so uh, you know, how, how did the Republicans deal with a president who just sort of wanders off into the fields and can never be trusted to keep his word? I will say, uh, first of all, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, as Casey noted, did try to prevent this and tried to do everything in their power to beg the president off this fight. They knew he would lose. Kevin McCarthy talked about it a million times with the president. I will say this, though. If you are in the president's position and you promised a border wall for all of these months and, frankly, years since he launched his campaign, and two years later you still have gotten basically nothing on this border wall, at some point his allies felt like he had to stand up and fight. But, but, but think, Jake, here's the thing. I mean, again, that would be a great argument for Donald Trump and Republicans to push, except for the fact, as we all know, Republicans were in charge for two years. Yep. Republicans like John Cornyn said walls don't work. Lindsey Graham said walls don't work. The Republicans didn't want the wall. They just wanted the political fight surrounding the wall. I think that's 100 percent true. And if you look back over the last two years, the president had almost shut down the government multiple times because of this wall. And he feels like in his telling that he was treated poorly by the leadership of his party. But frankly, they felt like if you talk to uh, members of the House Republican leadership and the Senate leadership behind the scenes, what they'll say is the president made an unrealistic promise and people were hamstrung by it. And he, by the way, refused deals to get things that are close to this wall many times. He had a deal, as, as Sam mentioned a couple minutes ago, for $25 billion, and he refused that. So uh, this has been political malpractice, and I get the sense, frankly, that many members of the president's White House are, are misguiding him and misleading him. And, he, I mean, lost in all of this was the State of the Union, which, I don't, I, where does that stand, Yamish? And also, I mean, we're looking at a president who is willing to send troops to the border to prepare for caravans that never came and was even talking about them last week like good thing we got those two caravans and we we pushed them back and there's another one coming I mean th these things actually he says them and he actually put troops at the border is it possible he will shut down the government again or declare a national emergency against these caravans well I think so called interesting things that came out of the shutdown is that we kind of all now know what the state of our union is, right? Yeah. Everybody knows that the state of the Shut union down. is chaotic. It's, <laughs> it's, it's petty. Um, it's political warfare. So in some ways, whenever President Trump gets up there, and maybe it's February 5th, which I've seen that date float around a bit, but Nancy Pelosi, of course, as we know, has the final say on when he gets up there, as the president had to learn the hard way. Right. Um, whenever so he gets up there, it's going to be him basically talking about his policies, and I think it's going to be more of a political speech now, because so many people have seen for 30 35 days, the government come to a screeching halt in our, in our airports network, in our, in our restaurants be, have to extend restaurant weeks because people aren't spending money. And of course, let's not even talk about the 800,000 workers who suffered for more than a month without a paycheck. So when I think it comes to a shutdown, I don't think that President Trump will do this again, only because he lost so badly this time. The idea that he was, that the Democrats got him to go on camera to say, I will own this shutdown, I think really um, hamstringed him. And the idea that he's not saying Mexico will pay for the wall anymore, um, that tells me that he understands that Mexico's not going to pay for the wall. So Speaker Pelosi has to reissue the invitation for him to come back, and she has not done so. She has not. <laughs> she has not reissued her invitation. She has not told him when. Um, there, was a, there was a time at the White House ad right after this, they said, well, maybe this will be next week. And Speaker Pelosi quickly batted that down and said, the State of the Union will not be next week. Wow. So I think that we're just going to have to figure out when Nancy Pelosi is finished tweeting about Roger Stone and all the issues that are going on with the president's associates, she'll get around and saying, okay, here's when you can come to my house. Talk about being schooled. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let, 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 yeah. Can I just, I just wanted to ask, David Ignatius, what did you think about that? Um, I, I'm glad Yamish brought it up. So, 
Donald Trump makes a political decision that obviously puts him in a terrible position. Uh, and it is uh, almost immediately after that, that moment takes place, Nancy Pelosi sent some tweets that really kick him where, where it hurts, uh, talking about Roger Stone and talking about uh, the corruption. Uh, I'm, I'm not suggesting that she doesn't have the right to do that. I'm not suggesting that in Trump's Washington, she, maybe she would have been seen weak if she didn't do that. But mm -hmm. I just wonder, might that have been an opportunity to hold a punch and put out a tweet talking about a deal? She's got Donald Trump's number, and I, I think she's getting so many pats on the back for having yeah. navigated this uh, so skillfully politically. But the basic point that you make, that it's, it's now time for Pelosi to, to turn toward, you know, f helping the country find the way out of this, um, it, it, take the win, as it were, and then turn that into policy. I think that's, I think that's, that's right. The, it's so striking. We have this manufactured crisis on the border. Mm -hmm. the, this vanity wall is what I've come to think of it as. It's sort of promise the That's putting it nicely. He can't, he can't give it up. And we have a real crisis caused by the shutdown. Right. And we haven't begun to, to hear all the things that were happening in the air uh, as air traffic controllers, you know, b had reduced numbers, the spacing between, I mean, th it's my understanding there were real air security problems that pilots were facing. We were a couple days from having you know, a real crack in the, in the, in the air traffic control system. So I, I just, I think when you compare the two, the manufactured crisis, the real crisis, the idea we're going to go back to the real crisis, which would get be even worse the next time around. Joe, I just, I still think that's, Pelosi should understand that's not, that's not the best political course for her. Pelosi though, I really don't. It's not Pelosi. Pelosi, McConnell, McCarthy, I think Casey would agree with me here, they could get a deal. The president needs to be able to accept something and sign something. Right. Which the problem is you assume a rational actor. Yeah. President of the United <laughs> that's States. That's the thing. And that's why, Joe, I think yeah. she cannot let the pressure off him, that she's got to keep uh, things pretty tight um, and be pretty tough and only let up when she's got him cornered into a deal. He has proven time and time again not to be trustworthy and to veer off in many different directions that have been destructive and that he has not kept his word. I don't think she can negotiate publicly on Twitter with him or, or try and give an inch. I don't think she can. He's not someone who plays fair. Well, we of course all know that. And we also know uh, that Nancy Pelosi is the best politician on Capitol Hill. And we said it in real time while uh, there were some Democrats talking about possibly replacing her, that we thought that yeah. would be foolish. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is, is brilliant at what she does. Uh, I just, again, I just want, uh, I understand Democrats have rightly attacked Donald Trump uh, over the past uh, several months over the, the border issue, over the shutdown. I will say, though, that a Democratic majority in 2020, uh, Democratic success in states like Wisconsin and Minnesota and Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania and Virginia may in small part uh, rest on them being able to take the border security issue off the table. This is an opportunity to do it. My only point is you don't do that uh, when your opponent is negotiating from a position of strength. You do that when they're negotiating from a position of weakness. And I'm just wondering if Democrats are looking at that opportunity uh, in mm -hmm. the coming weeks or if they're going to keep Trump shoved up against the wall so much that we could have another government shutdown. I understand again, and we've been saying every day, this plays against Donald Trump's best interest. At some point, Democrats will need to put points up on the board and say, look what we did for border security. Now, let's move on. Let's talk about, you know, refugees. Let's talk about what's happening with children at the border. Let's talk about, 
you know, working class wages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera.